Exactly 100 years ago today, the Royal Air Force was created. It was the first time that any country had formed an entirely separate and independent military air power. The new RAF took to the skies to support ground forces on the Western Front in World War I. And the Royal Air Force is still going strong, including here at RAF Valley on Anglesey. My visit to the base was before the recent tragic news of an engineer losing his life when a Red Arrows jet crashed last month. In the hundred years since the RAF's creation, over 70,000 servicemen and women have given their lives in peacetime and in war, which is one reason why faith is really important to some of those who fly here, including Flight Lieutenant Johnny. Uh, I became a Christian after I joined the Air Force, and that's changed my perspective on all of life, including uh, my service in the Royal Air Force, because I follow Jesus Christ as my King. Now, following him as my King means that I need to obey him in what he has commanded in his word, the Bible. But I, like all of us, fail to live up to those standards. And so I depend upon God's forgiveness. The challenges and the difficulties that we can go through do have a plan and purpose, even if I don't understand them at the time. And that regularly plays into my role as a serviceman. I was going to say, how do you reconcile being a Christian and also being a, a, an RAF pilot and, and maybe having to go to conflict? In um, the Bible, and particularly in the book of Romans, God says that governments are set up in order to protect their people, to enforce justice and the natural rule of law. To have the privilege of serving my country, to defend people who are unable to defend themselves, to protect our skies, allows our country to live in the freedom that it currently enjoys. Um, do you ever turn to God when you're up there in the skies? I don't really have the mental capacity to pray as I'm flying. Um, and there's a lot to concentrate on. The role of my faith in terms of flying is, is knowing that my eternal destiny is with Christ and he has given me a, a body and a brain that is capable of doing this. I'm very privileged to be able to serve my country um, in doing so. Here we are in the RAF centenary year, very much looking at the past. You're part of the RAF's future. How much does the past impact on who you are now and what you do for the RAF? We are uh, privileged in the oldest air force in the world to look back at some ordinary people who achieved extraordinary things. That's inspiring as we go ahead into the future with an uncertain world, with challenges that no one can really predict, with a world that can change overnight. Uh, looking back at the bravery and uh, the courage of, of the few who have gone before us is essential.
Friday was, of course, Good Friday. And 20 years ago, on the same day, the historic Good Friday Agreement was signed in Northern Ireland. Claire McCullum is back in her home city of Belfast to discover its impact 20 years on. The Good Friday Agreement brought to an end the 30 years of conflict for us here in Northern Ireland, known as the Troubles. The momentous agreement inspired many to start working together for the first time, including the four main churches here in Belfast. One initiative they created was YouthLink, a scheme to train youth workers for the city, with both Protestants and Catholics learning together. We were set up as a response to the divided society, and at that time, atrocities and loss of life were sadly an everyday occurrence and people lived in fear. And so we were set up at that time to support and resource church-based youth work, but with a key objective to engage young people in programs that provided them with opportunities to build relationships of respect and trust within and between communities and across um, our member churches. There's something about a symbol that you maybe connected with uh, a little bit. There are currently 45 students here who will go out to work in the local communities but some previous students are now trainers themselves. You think made just such a difference in, in my life. As an 18-year-old, um, life was a bit of a mess, no, no qualifications. I, I lost my grandfather in the troubles. I was a bitter young man with nowhere to go, and you think gave me the opportunity to change my life. The first qualifications pretty much had my life. I used it as a springboard to get into university, got a degree of first-class honours, and then I started working within the youth sector, and I ended up working in YouthLink. I, it helps me a lot, my face, driving in the car, I'm like praying for Phil that he gets his assignment done in time. And, um, but also it helped me to go on a journey of reconciliation where I've dealt with some of the baggage from the past and losing my granddad and maybe being a bit sectarian or bitter in my, way, my own life where I met Protestants for the first time and just built meaningful relationships. It's the best of both worlds. I'm able to put my faith into action through my job. This, this is a statue of the infant Jesus, but it's also known as the child of Prague. And Creating an environment in YouthLink is about being able to explore those ideas, those thoughts, those beliefs, and to understand that we, we can have difference in beliefs, but actually it's about knowing the impact of those and how that impacts how we treat other people. I think the best way that we can do that is by creating an environment where people feel safe. Sometimes we can hide behind our beliefs and our views and actually being encouraged to share those and to question them is a, an amazing opportunity. And now, 20 years on from the Good Friday Agreement, what are your hopes for YouthLink going forwards? I'd be hopeful that YouthLink will continue to make a difference in the lives of young people, that young people will become agents of transformation and change within this society and that they will make a difference, that Northern Ireland will become a better place to live, a place where people feel at ease with one another, at ease with difference um, and respect one another. And we stay in Northern Ireland for our next hymn from Inniskillen. <laughs> 